Hey guys, today we're going to talk about what happens if you remove your logo. And a bit of advice that I learned early on, I'm pretty sure it was a quote from uh, Ogilvy, one of the, fam the famous and also founder of, considered the founder of the advertising industry, was a strong brand and a good brand could actually create an ad and not include their logo or any brand identifying elements and the consumer would still know who is it, whose ad it is. A great example of this is Nike. Nike doesn't have to have the swoosh on any of their advertising. You know from anything that Nike does, it's Nike. Because they truly capture their brand in pretty much everything that they do. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And one area that we're going to start with is businesses are often asked, how well do you know your customer? Fabulous question. Absolutely fabulous question. The latest stat that I read was 80% of companies do not actually know their target market. Now you may know some aspects of it, but they don't actually know the details of their target market. And that's scary. How many businesses are out there and 80% of them don't really have any idea of who their target market is or how to reach them. So it does encourage you to go beyond the traditional demographics by asking that question. You know, you don't just work with women. You don't just work with new moms. What is it about them? How do you get inside their life and truly feel what they feel and understand where they're coming from? That's how you understand your true target market. And the more you know, the easier it is to not only uh, reach them, but also to truly emotionally connect with them. Because we all know that as logical as we say we are, and as much as we try to convince ourselves that we are making logic-based, rational decisions, ultimately, we're making emotional decisions. That's the reality of life. But the flip side of this question and this analysis is actually how well do your customers know you? Let's take a moment and think about that. How well do your customers actually know you? The initial assumption and the initial look when I ask companies this is they get this look on their face. Well, of course they know me. They know all about me. They know the services I offer. They know how I work. They know, they know, they know, they know. I challenge you to rethink that because the majority of customers do not actually know as much about you as you think they do. It's a reality check. So here, an exercise that I do when I'm working with clients or I'm giving a presentation is let's think about, oh, I'm covering up the camera there. Let's try that. There we go. So let's think about last time you went to the grocery store. Tell me about the brand or anything you can think of regarding toilet paper and bread that you bought. I don't care what you tell me. You can tell me the plastic was clear. It had kind of a green color on it had a teddy bear on it or oh I don't know I just go to Costco and pick that up whatever they have in uh, in the store that day is what I buy what type of bread and toilet paper did you buy last time you went to the store and if you really think about this you don't actually know the details of it even if you can come up with a specific brand you know, we talked about toilet paper. Maybe you did buy Charmin Extra Large Extra Fluffy. I don't know if that's an actual one. Totally made that up, but let's go with it. And bread, you bought their Trader Joe's gluten-free bread in a green package. I gave you specifics, and maybe you can do that back to me with whatever it is that you bought. But take it one step further. What do you know about that company? Do you know how, in this case, Charmin went about and manufactured it? Do you know who makes Charmin? Do you know what else Charm the company that makes Charmin 
what other products they make and they produce. Maybe you do, but that's you. The majority of people don't. When I do this exercise, what people learn is that they don't actually pay attention to not only the brands that they're buying, but they're also not really paying attention to what's going on behind the brands until something major happens. And the same thing happens with the products and the services that you're offering. Is your customers get to know you based on how they specifically work for you or work with you. And they may know that you offer other services, but they don't know the details of it. And it's not top of mind to ask or to inquire because it's not directly relevant to them. So keep that in mind and make sure that you're building into your system a way that you can keep them educated about other ways that you can help them. And this is one of the tips for helping you overcome that challenge of if you were to remove your logo, would your client still recognize you? Is maybe at a certain mark, whatever that mark is for you, maybe it's six months, maybe a year, maybe quarterly, sit down with a client or have a quick phone conversation with them and recap. You know, here's what I remember or how I think about what we've done over this time period. And it allows the opportunity for reflection. So you're sharing your perspective of it. They're sharing their perspective of it. So it gives you insight as to what's valuable to them, but it's also giving you ways to market your services to other prospects because you're hearing their voice. You're hearing what matters to them. And in that conversation, you can then go down the path of, okay, so here's what we've already helped you with and here's what you've identified as a current challenge you're facing. Did you know that we also offer these services? Assuming you've worked well together and they're pleased with how you work together, that could lead into the conversation of, no, I did not know that. Let's talk. And there you go. Now, another thing to remember is as much, again, remember, we like to think we're logical, but we ultimately make emotion-based decisions, is give them a reason to remember you. It's not your clients or the market's job to remember you. It's your job to give them a reason to remember you. When we work with a company, we set our own expectations. As long as they do this, I'm happy. And in all reality, as long as you meet that expectation, you're causing no waves. But at the same time, you're, not also, you're also not giving them a reason to remember you. People remember you when you do something beyond that or you don't meet that expectation. And that's what they talk about. Now, am I, am I saying that you should stage it and go eccentric with it? No. Sometimes it's just as simple as, you know, calling the client out of the blue saying, hey, I was thinking of you. I know you're working on this. How's it going? That little touch of they know that you care can make all the difference in the world. So those are the two tips that I have for you today.